Hi, this is Paxi Nadu. I want to give you a little overview of the SCOPE uh, DSP systems modular system. We're going to start in this video with a very simple um, thing. We're just going to use the modular to build a one oscillator uh, synth. Simplest thing possible, just to kind of show what um, this modular is all about and modulars in general in the digital world are all about. So. Um, before we get into the patching, all you have going into um, what we're going to build itself. Everything that we're going to build is going to be built inside this box. And um, this box, the outputs of this box, the audio outputs, um, one and two, which we can use um, for stereo. You, you can only do one, but we'll use two and have a stereo machine. And they're going into my mixer. Um, and then you have MIDI coming from uh, just a MIDI controller. Uh, going into the patches um, MIDI input. <clears throat> so when you, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So when you click inside this box, um, the first thing you notice is that you have um, inputs on the left side over here and outputs on the right side. Um, the inputs are um, MIDI and as well as audio, which we're not going to use in this particular patch. But um, in other patches, it's very useful. You can make effects machines and um, process o incoming audio with modular as well. Um, it, and then you have a MIDI out, which we rarely use. Um, you can process MIDI inside and send it outside with MIDI modules. Um, and then you have four audio outputs. Only one and two externally to the mixer. So we'll, we're only going to be using one and two for this patch. So um, let's get down to the building of um, patches in modular uh, parts. So, Modular, um, as the name implies, is a system where everything is broken down into individual um, individual smaller machines that together are connected to form um, the finished machine, whether it's a synth or an effects um, machine, a sequencer, a drum machine, drone, uh, whatever. You can do many, many things, as we will see. So um, everything is broken down into individual um, things that do individual things. And um, if you think of a synthesizer, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is that it produces sound, uh, obviously. So the first thing you're going to need is something to produce that sound. So all of you, of course, know that on um, every traditional uh, analog, many digital synths, you have um, a multi-oscillator that has um, some basic waveforms like sine, triangle, saw, pulse, and square. Um, using this oscillator. Um, the second obvious thing, which everyone um, loves and uses like all the time, is filtering. So we're going to take the very basic um, low 24 dB low pass filter. And you notice there are three kinds of 24 dB low pass filters. Each one of them behaves in a different way. And we're going to take the 24 dB resonating low pass filter, which means that on high resonance it itself oscillates, uh, as well as um, before actually self-oscillating fully by itself, it gets to really high resonance and can be swept in a really nice way. So we're going to be using this filter. Um, something to control um, the way the volume behaves. If you press a key, you want the um, synth to play a sound, and you want to tell it, obviously, when to end the sound. So the first thing that you would maybe think is you need an envelope. And you do need an envelope. And we're going to pull out a standard attack decay sustain release envelope. Um, they are, there are many different types of envelopes. This one, as it is like the most standard and um, obvious choice for demonstration, uh, as simple as this one that we're going to do. So um, envelope is not enough. You need the envelope is basically it's a control signal. It is not an audio signal. It tells something in the modular how to behave. It doesn't actually affect the sound all by itself. So what it needs to do is it needs to tell an amplifier which will take the sound oscillator and filter and 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 it wants to tell the amplifier when to start and when to end. So we're going to connect the envelope the amplifier's modulation input. Before the envelope anything, you need to tell it when to start. Um, you're obviously pressing a MIDI key, 
or sending it MIDI notes, and the envelope somehow needs to know to, re to respond to these MIDI notes. So what we have in this system is what is called an MVC, which is basically a MIDI control um, brain. And you have different kinds, and we're going to be using MVCC, which is um, the most developed of the MVCs and with the most options. But it doesn't matter. You can actually use um, A or B, and I will show in other tutorials the differences between them. So we connect the MIDI incoming into the patch. So the MVC is receiving all this MIDI information and is the one that is going to handle it. It knows how to separate this MIDI information things that you will need in a modular patch. Need We talked about the envelope. We need to connect a gate signal. It just tells the envelope that a key has been pressed and that it needs to start doing its thing based on the options, uh, the parameters that it is set on. So here we go. We have connected the envelope to the gate, and it is now receiving gate signals, but it's still not doing anything else. Later, it needs to know um, at what frequency to play at, at what note to play at. You obviously don't want to just um, press the gate and have it play the same frequency all the time. Although you can, you can use a constant frequency model, module, which we will discuss in a later tutorial. But here we want to connect the frequency, the pitch that the MVC is receiving, directly to the oscillator. Of course, we can also um, create pitch bends and um, modulate the pitch, but in this case, we're connecting the frequency to the frequency input of the oscillator directly. From the oscillator, you can choose. You can choose to have the VCA before the filter. You can choose to have the VCA after the filter. We tend to do it um, these days before the, the filter, before the VCA, because then if you have uh, a filter, a self, if you want a self-resonating filter patch, you can still have control over the volume with the VCA. If it would be after the VCA, then um, the filter would be basically always on because it will not be changed in volume uh, as you change notes. There's output into the filter's input. Um, and then we're connecting the filter's input into the VCA's input. So the audio is being streamed from the oscillator to the filter to the VCA. The VCA is affected by the envelope. It's almost ready. We're going to do a couple of more things before we connect the sound. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out an LFO. And there are many, many kinds of LFOs. This is just some of them over here. And there are more in the flexor pack. We're going to be using a simple um, multi LFO B. It does have an option, a um, few options on it. And we're only going to connect um, right now the output into the filter's modulation input. If you look at the filter to the knobs for cutoff and resonance, it has different inputs on it. So it has. Um, one input for resonance modulation, where we where you would connect an LFO or an envelope to control the resonance. One input for keyboard following, where you would co connect note information to tell it which note it is on, and then whether to change the filter parameters based on note settings. And you have two cutoff modulation inputs, which affect the cutoff knob. And um, actually input either an LFO, two LFOs, an envelope, two envelopes, whatever you want to modulate the filter cutoff. So we're, we have connected an LFO to one filter cutoff input. And we will take another envelope, and we will use an attack decay envelope just to show that there are other types. This one does not have a sustain and a release. And we're going to connect this envelope's output into the um, second cutoff modulation input the gate signal, this you should already know about, from the MVC. And this envelope also needs to know that it is, um, when it is receiving MIDI information, it needs to start and do its thing. So we've connected all of this together. Is We need to um, output the signal over, out of everything. So um, the thing that particular to this modular and some and all modulars actually digital ones but um, it's done in different ways in different modulars here you can either have a monophonic signal or a polyphonic signal 
And if you choose to have a polyphonic signal, then you need to have a module that tells the patch that it is operating in a polyphonic way and to treat every voice polyphonic voice. And when the audio comes out of the patch into um, into one audio feed. So you need this particular module, which is called the poly out. Now, if you don't don't really understand this concept, it's not important. Um, all you all you need to know that is you need the poly out uh, module um, out of any pot, um, patch that you want to use polyphonically. Now, before we connect it to the output, we will add just another little quirk. We will add a stereo insert effect module, and we will connect the poly out into this module and we'll connect the module to the output. And this is just a multi-effect, which let, lets you take um, advantage of all the scope effects uh, within your modular patch. So we're going to put a multi-effect on it, so we can actually put effects on this patch from the various um, effects that we have on our scope system. And then um, this is now the patch playing. So, this has been a really simple presentation of the scope modular system, uh, showing you just how to do the, the most basic of things in the system. Obviously, it can get much more elaborate than this, and we look forward to showing you a bit more in, uh, uh, on this modular and this system in future videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks.